Hey, hello, and I'm going to be reading Limpy Has an Idea. That's what uh, the next five pages are going to be. Limpy Has an Idea. Now Limpy, who had been watching and listening, went over to Mulu and woke her up. When she heard the story, she almost cried. We've got to do something, said Limpy. What can we do? asked Mulu. Well, said Limpy, I'm not so lame I've, as I've made believe. I can do that plowing as well as any other horse. And there's a collar that's on the old plow in the corner. I'm going to do it, do, I'm going to do the plowing. You know, said Mulu, I've been giving only about a cupful of milk. I was too lazy to chew my cud, that's why. But I'll chew my cud 30 hours a day before I'll let that mean man take any of us. What's the matter, cried Doty. Hush, said Limpy. People will think it's time to get up before they've gone to bed. Soon s slope s p l o p splop. Soon splop came tumbling over when she was to see what had happened. She was so noisy about it that she woke up Mimkin and Chuckluck, but not. Pugwug, that pig could sleep through anything. Say, said Slop, Splop, <clears throat> if that old penny, if that old pepper box ever tries to do, to take me away from Mr. Penny, I'll butt him so high that he'll never come down. Children's books are sometimes just made up of, like, a bunch of different names, which is entertaining. Oh, hush. Don't talk nonsense, said Limpy. Or did they? We damage his garden and we have to pay. What work do you choose? I don't choose any, said Plop. Splop? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it has to be done. I'll clean out those old stones. I'll cut the lawn, said Mimkin. I'll lay bigger eggs, said Chuckluck. Splop shook her horns in front of Dottie. What good is a rooster without a tail? she asked. All he can do is eat bugs. <coughs> that gave Limpy an idea. Doty could follow the plow and save all the worms. Mr. Penny never had enough worms at his stand outside the fence for the men who came from the city to fish. Well, come on, said Splop. Let's go. Limpy looked through the hole. Mr. Penny had fallen asleep with his head on the table. Limpy looked out the window. Everything was black, so he let Splop run ahead to open the gate. Forget, forgetting he ever felt lame. Limpy hurried to get the plow. He pushed his head through the collar and handled the plow quite easy. 
Oh, I almost forgot, he said. When we went over to Pugwug and woke him up, I need something heavy to hold the plow down. Come. Out they went into the dark, all but Mulu and Chuckluck, who stayed behind, one to chew her cud and the other to eat some food. All through the night, Mr. Penny said that sat by his table and painfully tried to think. Um, whenever he fell asleep, his dreams woke up. When morning came, he still didn't know how to save his animals. He went back to look at them. Then he put his stool down beside Mulu and started to milk. Mulu! cried Mr. Penny. After a few minutes, instead of a cup full of milk, there was a whole bucket full. He jumped back and threw his arms around Mulu's neck. Good Mulu, he explained. If only you knew how much I need this milk. The chickens were squawking, crowing, trying to make him look. He went to see if by chance Chuck Luck had an egg for him. Bending down, he looked closely at something in the straw. There was an egg, a large goose lay, and a can full of beautiful worms. There's a photo of them with his milk can beside his body there looking out onto the farm. Mr. Penny cooked an egg, the egg for his breakfast. Then ran... Hey, uh, there we go. We got a, another premiere showing you around this room. Then he ran out and put the worms on his stand where he sold them like newspapers. They were two for a penny and he left a box for money. Next, he put part of the milk into his newest bucket and went up the hill to his neighbor's house. When he knocked gently at the back door, the neighbor came out and said, Well, old man, I see you have a lot d done. If you work as fast every night as you did last night, you'll soon have paid for all the damage your animals did yesterday. Mr. Penny looked around to see what the man was talking about. The grass on the lawn was cut short. A big pile of stones had been cleaned out from the pasture land. The fields was long stretch of newly plowed earth. It was like a soft brown carpet. I can't understand it all, Mr. Penny. Mr. Penny kept saying to himself as he hurried to the factory. The next morning, everything happened just as it had the day before. More milk, another giant egg, a can full of beautiful worms, and much more work done at the neighbor's. Well, old man, said the neighbor as he took the milk, you worked so fast you'll have the damage paid before the new moon. I'm jigsawed to a puzzle, said Mr. Penny as he went off 
to his job in the factory of Weddell, jigsawed to a puzzle, it must be goblins, though I never believed in them before. On the first night of the new moon, Mr. Penny's animals came tumbling home all out of breath. They woke up Mulu. They woke him woke up the hen. Hurrah, hurrah. It's all done. Damage is paid for. It's finished. All finished. Now what? said Splop, kicking up her heels as frisky as cold. I like to work. Me too, said Mimkin and Dotty. Limpy pulled the plow to its place in the corner and slipped his head out of the collar. You know, he said, I've been thinking how stupid we've been never doing any work. All this time we might have had a garden right here for ourselves, for Mr. Penny. On Monday morning when Mr. Penny came out of the shed, his pipe dropped from his mouth. There at one end of his own field, the ground had been plowed and piles of stones cleaned out. Well, I'm jigsawed to a puzzle. Those good goblins, he said. They did all that work for my neighbor and now they're starting a garden for me, a garden for me and my animals. On Saturday noon, Mr. Penny, pretty good, Mr. Penny hurried home from the factory. He took all the pennies he'd saved from selling worms and milk, a whole bag full of pennies, and he and his family went to market to buy seeds. First thing they bought, seeds for cabbages, squash, turnips, and all the other vegetables they liked to eat. Then they hurried home, and Mr. Penny planted everything. The rains came, and the sun was warm. Before very long, Mr. Penny's garden was the most beautiful garden in the town of Whittle. The th one foggy night when there came a storm, he went out to see his if his garden was all right. Well, what on earth, he exclaimed, for as sure as breathing, there was lame, limpy, no longer lame, pulling a plow with Pugwug holding it down. Behind walked Dotty, looking for worms. A little further over was Splop cleaning out stones. Mimkin was busy cutting grass. Mr. Penny ran around the rain, exclaiming, So you are the goblins and fairies that <laughs> have been as busy as beavers with such a garden we have more than enough to eat i'll no longer need to work in that noisy factory of whittle i can stay right at home and just work in my garden mr penny kept on selling worms and milk and he sold truckloads of stones for filling up holes in the road Soon he had enough money to buy lumber and paint and build a new modern house. In the long summer evenings, the people of Whittle would took over the low fence and say to each other, Isn't he a strange one living in a house with all those animals? But I say, they're the happiest family in Whittle. So that was, Limpy has an idea. Um, this next story, if I choose to read it, is called Children Around the World.